There are three national forests in Florida. All are places of unique beauty and also history. The second largest is located near Ocala, Florida called the Ocala National Forest, coming in at over 600 square miles or 435,000 acres. It was created in 1908 and includes many areas containing cool springs, but also desert-like conditions called scrublands. Ecologically, it's the largest concentration of sand pine scrub in the world. How about that? The Florida scrub ecosystem is defined as a sandy area with little vegetation and is the oldest Florida ecosystem. Florida scrub is a very old ecosystem found on coastal and ancient inland dunes throughout the state. Some of the inland ridges of scrub have been around since the early Pleistocene and that is about one million years ago. Our destination is just off US-19 in the Ocala National Forest to an old road called the Yearling Trail. This is restricted to a hiking trail only and it's about six miles long. We went on the Yearling Trail that took us to Pat's Island. It's an island in the sense that the land is a kind of dome of more fertile land that will support vegetation like pine trees surrounded by miles and miles of scrublands of low vegetation and sandy soil like palmetto and short shrubs. So it looks like an island, only surrounded by sandy soil and scrub rather than water. The Yearling Trail is so named because it's where Arthur Marjorie Cannon Rawlings first heard of the story from local inhabitants that became the basis for her Pulitzer Prize winning novel, The Yearling, in 1939. This book became a movie of the same name in 1940 and was filmed on location here on Pat's Island. Pat's Island is one of the most popular historic attractions in the Ocala National Forest. It was named after its first postmaster, Patrick Smith, who settled here in the 1840s. In its heyday, Pat's Island had its own church, school, post office, and self-appointed lay ministers. Human habitation on the island peaked before the turn of the 20th century at about a dozen families who farmed, ran woods cattle and hogs, hunted, fished, and made moonshine. They traded with boat travel in the nearby St. John's River. But life was hard in the isolation of the scrub, and by October of 1933, only two people remained, Calvin and Mary Long. It was with these people that Rawlings stayed and where she heard the story from Calvin's childhood of the deer fawn he had raised. And it was the long homestead that was used as the location of the movie, The Yearling. Today, no one lives here, marking the end of about a hundred years of human habitation. Here is an old cattle dipping bat. In the early 20th century, Florida farmers were required by law to dip livestock into vats of chemical solution to control or eradicate cattle fever tick. Arsenic, DDT, and other pesticides were used. The Florida Department of Health estimates that roughly 3,400 cattle dipping vats were built to combat the cattle fever ticks, which are capable of carrying and transmitting Babesia, a blood parasite deadly to cattle. And it was here I was very excited to see a rare bird I've been looking for every time I come to these places, but I've never seen. And here it is. Florida scrub jays are only found in this state. They occur only in peninsular Florida. Historically, Florida scrub jays were found in 39 counties in Florida, but currently only 32 counties still support these populations. During the last century, Florida scrub jay numbers declined by 80 to 90 percent, and there's only an estimated 3 to 4,000 family groups remaining. As a result, the Florida scrub jay is listed by the federal government as a threatened species. Scrub is an extremely rare type of upland habitat in Florida. The Florida scrub jay is the only bird species that is completely dependent on these scrubs. However, scrub is also home to a great variety of rare plants and animals, many of which also depend solely on this habitat for their survival. 
Here's a large sinkhole where residents of the island got their drinking water. We can see that it's now bone dry. Well, we come to the end of this hike and look forward to doing it again, since we missed some of the points of interest, like the Long Cemetery and the home sites. If you have the chance, do take the time to experience this rare glimpse into the ancient past and Florida's history.